Hello everyone, Mandy here and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. So today this is going to be the third video in the How to Roleplay series revised. Today we're going to be talking about preparation. Now preparation is a huge umbrella topic and I'm going to be splitting up these videos into separate little you know subcategories because there's a bunch of little subcategories or things that you need to do in order to prepare for a roleplay series. While preparing your series for recording, please keep in mind that this process is long and it will take a lot to prepare a roleplay, so take as much time as you need, there is no rushing this. This video is going to cover mods in Minecraft versions. I'm going to try to squeeze as much information about mods as I can into this video, so this might be a long one, but we'll see because I said the last one was a long one and that turned out to be like only like, I don't know, 15 minutes, so we'll see how this one does. Minecraft versions and mods. Mods you will need for your roleplay will depend on what type of story you're telling and what type of roleplay it is, but in my opinion, you will always need some basic core mods in order to get started. Mods can be very important to a roleplay. I get so many comments about what mods I use or how to get furniture or a specific item. Mods I'm going to list off right now, I feel like are the essential for a generic roleplay, but you don't have to take my advice, put whatever mods you want, but these are the main mods that I recommend if you just want to start out with something really simple in a light mod pack. Number one, deco craft. Deco craft is the mod that allows you to get a lot of furniture and a lot of extra accessories to put on your map or your sets. This furniture or items range from older and styled kind of medieval type stuff to more modernized stuff. The pack is made up of mostly modernized type of furniture. There's a bunch of stuff in it like couches, TVs, chairs, uh, lockers, a just a bunch of array of different stuff that I feel like is very helpful. Number two, more player models. More player models is how I do HD skin. It's also how people add specific attributes to their Minecraft characters. Say you've seen someone with antlers on their head in a Minecraft full play or have a tail or anything like that. They use either more player models or they use a different type of mod. More player models is the most common one you'll find for stuff like that. If you want to use something like HD skins in your Minecraft roleplay, I recommend using more player models if you're going to have body actors or if you're going to be doing a series like kind of just by yourself first person. Really quickly, I'm just going to run down how to put a specific skin on your Minecraft player. I'll go more into depth on this stuff and HD skins in another video. Really quickly, I'm just going to show you guys this. You open the menu by pressing F12 and then you get this little area and then you press the plus to start off a whole new little you know person little character profile i recommend doing this if you have multiple different characters or if your body acting for someone has multiple different characters by pressing edit you're gonna find this little area where you can give yourself different modifications this is what i mean by ears antlers horns tails whatever um you can also edit some other things which is really weird um so yeah but by but if you press options, then you're going to be able to go to add in your skin URL. This works for normal skins and HD skins. You can do this by entering in a link. I use Dropbox just so that way nothing gets stolen. You can also use Imgur if you really want to, but I recommend using Dropbox. Imgur, some people use as like a social media platform and the skins aren't really hidden very well from anyone else. So yeah, that is how you enter in a HD skin. Number three. Mr. Crayfish's Furniture. I know I already talked about DecoCraft, but like I said, that pack mostly is modernized furniture. If you're doing something like a medieval roleplay or fantasy, Mr. Crayfish comes in really handy. His furniture is themed to match the normal like theme of Minecraft. So his furniture looks like it belongs in the game and it looks very natural and within my opinion it's great to have when you don't really want to use the deco craft stuff and mix modernized furniture in with a medieval theme or background. Mr. Crayfish also has a car mod, it's called the Vehicles mod. If you want to rule that, you can. I just thought I would throw that in there for you if you want to do something like a modernized genre and you need cars. Number four, Pam's Harvest Craft. 
Pam's Harvest Craft comes in really handy when you are doing like a first person type of series or a series where people will see your item bar or your toolbar at the bottom. Pam's Harvest Craft is full of just random food. A lot of food that is not in, you know, Minecraft already. Like it has sandwiches, it has pies, it has cookies, it has so much other stuff. Um, it has a lot of old timey type of recipes as well. Something that you could see in medieval, but a lot of stuff that you would also see in modernized, you know, time, time setting. To be honest, this one is just preference, but I personally like seeing a Pam's Harvest Craft item being held in a player's hand, or I like seeing it in a hot bar whenever I do a series. I feel like it just gives a little bit more character to whatever you're trying to do. I feel like it tells you a little bit more about the main character, it tells you a little bit more about the person, you know, if they like to eat a specific food item. And I just think they look better in the hand than the regular Minecraft like items. I feel like they look better, like they're higher quality. Number five, Warp Book. Warp Book is important because unless you want to add something on like a map or a mini map, you can do that in replace of Warp Book. But I suggest using warp book so you can share your warp book with the rest of your team if you have a team with builders on it and people are helping you build a set it's important for them to know where to build it so yeah and know where the sets are if you're using body actors it's also important for them to know where to go so it's important for them to also have warp books right now i will go a little bit more in depth on how to use a warp book and what they do a warp book is a book within Minecraft that basically has a list of your warps in it. This way, um, you can give warp books to the rest of your team. If you're working with a team like builders, body actors, etc., it's important for them to be teleported to the exact location and not just give them coordinates because they can get a little confused with that. So basically, how you use a warp book is you get an unbound page and then you right click it in the spot that you want to set the warp to. And then, and then you shift and then right click the book to put it into the actual book. And then the warp will be set and you can name it to whatever you want. Um, in this video that I'm showing on the screen, I show you like how you do like two, it's basically the same process over and over and over again. And then you can teleport back and forth from different points. Number six, custom NPCs. Custom NPCs are great. They're how you get background characters and stuff like that. You can place down a custom NPC anywhere and the set just looks a little bit more full. It looks a little bit more lively. Um, and I will go into depth a little bit later on custom NPCs and show you exactly how to use it. Number seven, variable commodities. I'm pretty sure variable commodities was either attached to more player models or custom NPCs originally as a mod, but the mod creator separated it into two different distinctive mods because some people just wanted the NPCs and they didn't want the extra items or some people just wanted the extra items and they didn't want the NPCs. So basically variable commodities is a mod just full of random items. Like a lot of you ask where I get my phone that I have in Hotbar sometimes. That is the mod where I get the phone from. It's where you can get amulets from. It's where you can get magical stuff from like magical orbs. It's where you can get a satchel from, all that. It's just a bunch of different little items that's really, really useful. Number eight, chisel and bits. This one, once again, you can kind of throw it up in the air, but I feel like if you have chisel and bits in your mod pack, it gives the set a little bit more character. Um, once again, you don't have to have chisel and bits, um, but I feel like it's an essential because I like using it. Chisel and bits is how you make really, really small builds. Like if you see these little torch stands next to me, I made those with chisel and bits. And also this deck is made with chisel and bits and regular Minecraft slabs. As you can see, the sides are lined with cobblestone and yeah, that's not a full block. As you can see, that's not even a half slab. Number nine, chisel. Chisel is the mod that adds in a bunch of different things into your Minecraft world. It adds in different blocks, it adds in carpets. The carpets are my favorite part. That's literally the only reason why I have chisel is because I like the carpets. Number 10, hide names. Hide names is very important if you do something like a improv series where it is all first person. It's important to hide other people's player names so you don't see them. Um, if you want to completely immerse everybody 
into the role play and you don't want you know your voice actors IGNs shown then you can hide them with a quick command it's super simple number 11 world edit world edit in my opinion is very important it helps you get a lot of the bulk stuff done with your sets if you need to delete a specific area or you just need to delete all the trees in a specific area you can do that with world edit i do hope that you would be careful with this though because you can crash your server with world edit um you don't want to do that and you can also crash your game with world edit if you're just on like a single player world be mindful of how much you are wanting to, you know, delete or how much you are wanting to add because World Edit can really take a toll on performance. I suggest that this is one of the mods that you would want to learn in order to know how to build sets. And because a lot of the professional like Minecraft builders, whatever, people who professionally make sets or builds in Minecraft use a lot of World Edit. They also use Voxel, but Voxel is a plugin and not a mod. Number 12, Optifine. I recommend Optifine basically because it helps make your game smoother. It helps run everything. There's a bunch of different things that you can do with Optifine to make your experience just playing the game a lot better. You can turn off certain settings that you wouldn't be able to do with regular Minecraft. You can optimize your you know your settings um you can make it so it's completely lag free you can say how many particles you want in um, specific particles particles are a really 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 huge thing in minecraft because they take up a lot of the you know they take up a lot of the processing in order to even run the game so you can completely turn particles off with this mod and make it so your gameplay is very very smooth but your minecraft is gonna look a little weird within my opinion but Optifine is just great for optimizing your game and making it run smoother. Number 13, the final one, Forge Essentials. Now this one is also kind of like, you don't need it, but I like it, so I use it. I include it in all my mod packs. It's basically the Essentials plugin. If you don't know what the Essentials plugin is, a lot of people when having Minecraft servers use uses Essentials in order to add in like a in-game economy. They use it to add in um, player roles they use it to add in a lot of server maintenance and server utility things it also just shortens commands which i like because i don't want to type out a full command i can literally just type slash gm and then the number to switch to a different game mode if i would like to it gives you a lot of things that just makes my life honestly a lot simpler when trying to you know build sets i use this mod a lot when you wouldn't build i use this mod a lot when building sets i use this mod a lot when i'm trying to get around my map i use it to teleport to people if you don't want a specific person to teleport to you during you know a scene you can set up a little role for them and you can set up some little you know the commands that you want that role to have access to and the commands that you don't want that role to have access to and it just makes life a whole lot simpler there are some extra mods that you can add if you want extra stuff like mo creatures is an extra one fairy lights and wearable backpacks but these aren't essential keep in mind that some mods might need supporting mods a lot of the mods that i just mentioned do have supporting mods to where you're gonna have to add in mods that basically help the main mod run you won't see anything from that supporting mod but it's just there to help the other one run because if the main mod doesn't have the supporting mod it's not going to run properly or just not run at all or it will crash your game so like i just said supporting mods are other mods that will just help the core mods run think of it like a electronic think of it like an electronic you have you have to plug in say like your phone into a power outlet so it'll turn on and work properly and you constantly have to keep your phone charged in order for it to work properly some mods need an extra bit of help in order to function properly this can easily double your mod pack but it's necessary 
mod compatibility is a huge thing. It's something you'll need to keep in mind. Some mods might not work with each other, so make sure to test your mods in a default single player world before you put them on any type of server. If your game crashes, this can be an indicator of a mod not working properly with another mod. If a mod isn't showing up in game, but you know it's in your folder, this can also be another indicator. If blocks are black and purple, this also means that something else can be broken. Also, if you do see a mod that is in your game, but it's not on the server, and when you click on items within that mod, you will crash. That's another indicator. When compiling mods into a mod pack, something else to keep in mind is Minecraft versions. I recommend using 1.12.2 for Minecraft. This version is the version developers don't update past or a lot of developers don't update past this point. I started making role plays in version 1.7.10. So a lot of mod devs didn't update mods to even 1.12.2, but I noticed that there were a lot more mods available in a newer version. So to basically simplify that, I started making role plays with version 1.7.10 in Minecraft and a lot of those mods were not updated to newer versions, but I noticed that when comparing 1.7.10 to 1.12.2, there are more mods available for 1.12.2 than 1.7.10. But for the newest versions of Minecraft, there are most likely won't be a lot of mods for it that are stable, or there will be things like fabric, which is trash. Please don't use fabric. <laughs> Especially since the 1.13 update, they drastically changed how Minecraft runs and a lot of the code. I recommend only downloading mods from CurseForge so you won't get any viruses on your computer. Do not download any mods that are from any other website. CurseForge has the biggest library of, for of mods you will ever need. They have so much more on CurseForge than just mods. They have maps, they have shaders, they have texture packs. Just go to CurseForge, please. Blockbuster and Metamorph. So for Blockbuster and Metamorph, I don't have extensive knowledge on these mods at all, but I have the bare minimum to get you started. If you want a tutorial that goes deeper into these two mods and into explaining them, I recommend checking out McHorris as he is the mod developer. He made these mods. He has a channel for simple explanations on the mods and how they work. And also Lady Mania has done many tutorials on these mods where she goes in depth on how to use them and how she specifically uses them for her role plays. Blockbuster and Metamorph are mods that you can add into your game that will allow you to make role plays all by yourself. You do not need any type of body actor. Personally, I still use body actors because it allows my community to participate in the making of my content as that's what a lot of them want and also i still use body actors because i also teach people who want to know how to make a role play how to make a role play in my body acting sessions i get a lot of questions sometimes depending on the day and pretending like what session on how what i and on how i do specific things and how i record and all that stuff now I'm going to quickly jump in and show you the knowledge that I do have on Blockbuster and Metamorph. So in the beginning, you can see that I'm actually using a director block in order to set up my scene. This director block does not work with the latest of the mod with the latest version of Blockbuster and Metamorph just because of the just because the mod dev decided that it just wasn't needed and you could access it through the UI anyway. So a little bit later, you'll see me access it through the UI, but right now what I'm doing is I'm just setting everything up. For the recording ID, I put down the character name or whatever I feel like I needed to. So for Fred, I put Fred. For Alex, I put Alex. And yeah. And then basically how to record these separate individuals, you would press the record button. I was trying to find some other settings, but for some reason I just couldn't find them. So to record, you click the record button and then you set yourself up. I quickly built a little tiny like wall in order for them to like body act against, I guess. I don't know why I wanted to do this. I just did. At first I started building with grass, but then I was like, nah, let's get something nice or some wood. So that's what I did. 
So yeah, okay, I'm building a wall, building a wall, building a wall. I don't care about building the wall, honestly. Uh, yeah, cool. Um, usually when you do stuff with this, um, with the director block, you would want to hide it behind something. So that's also why I built the wall. But like I said, um, use the UI. So basically to start recording, you would go into the chat and then you would press the little record button and then it's gonna say that you can't find the Alex file. That's fine, don't ignore it, you know what I mean? Because like you haven't recorded Alex's part yet and then you start bobbing your head, acting like you're talking to someone and may stop when they're talking back to you and stuff like that. It's super duper simple. This is just like a tiny little scene where Fred and Alex, you know, communicate and then they go off and explore the everlasting flatland of this world that I am in so yeah and then you know I'm running away da, 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 and yeah and then I stop recording and then I go over back to the thing and then I go into the record for Alex um you will have the same UI when you go through when you access this stuff through the GUI so don't worry you'll have the same stuff but I basically I'm just gonna go through and body act with Fred now and so I can see what Fred is doing and and, you know you can physically see what the other character is doing it's easier if you have voice actor lines before you do this so that way you can sync up the bobbing to the voice actor lines so yeah you can set them up in like a recording software or in like a editing software so you have them all matched up next to each other for a specific scene that's one way that I know some people do it I just do it all willy-nilly and I just go through my script and that's a little bit harder but you know it's fine so yeah so this is the part where i noticed some things weren't like 100 percent working so i ended up you know uh updating mods at this point but here i'm just showing that you can see alex and steve interacting and this is how people do stuff without having body actors custom npcs custom npcs is a mod where you can add in background characters or you can pose specific characters in specific ways. There are two types of different NPCs. There are interactive ones and background ones. Interactive NPCs are mostly used for first person role plays where you can interact with these NPCs by right clicking on them and then a line of text will pop up above their head or a prompt will pop up in front of you on your screen with different options that you can pick. Um, all of this is set up by you. Quickly, I'm just going to show you how to do both those options. Alrighty, and we're just going to set up some really, really quick dialogue lines. Some of these are going to be really simple. Others are not going to be so simple. What I'm going to show you first is one of the easiest ways to set up dialogue boxes. And one is to put one of the roles or whatever as dialogue. Now this isn't going to give you like dialogue like you might have seen it. This is going to be like really quick, really easy and like really dirty dialogue. Not dirty dialogue, but like it's going to be a really like quick and easy, simple way for you to just get what you need to get done and not do any of the fancy stuff. So basically your starting text is what the NPC is going to say to you and then your dialogue options are going to be, you know, the things that you're saying. And then when you press edit, I'm pretty sure that's going to be what the NPC says back to you. And then you can just press escape and that's going to be the end of your dialogue and that's going to be the end of your conversation with the NPC. Like I said, there's no really fanciness to this one there's nothing that's going to really make this like really cool <laughs> basically it's like quick and simple and yeah that's basically all that there is to say this this is one of the easiest ways other than doing lines to set up like this um this is one of the easiest ways to set up a dialogue box sometimes dialogue boxes can be really complicated which is what i'm going to get into after this one but yeah so basically i just set it up and everything and now i'm just going to show you what it's going to look like so this is what it's going to look like like i said it's going to be nothing fancy and i'm going to go through and show you all the options and the way to get out of that is to just press escape on your keyboard which is going to be the upper like corner one that's on the top row of your keyboard so yeah that's really simple really super easy now i'm going to show you dialogue boxes in another way which is super weird and super complicated so this kind of tripped me up a little bit when i was going to start it so basically you have to go into global and then 
dialogue and then categories and then you have to make a category and within that you have to make a dialogue Here it took my brain a little bit of relearning to do as I was doing this because I haven't done dialogue on NPCs in a really long time and if I ever do, it's really something simple like lines. But as you can see, I was having some issues with this, but you know, it's fine. I got the hang of it eventually, but you're going to want to want to go to the dialogues and you're going to want to press add. And then this is going to be your little prompt that's going to show up. You can label it however you want. You can name it hello. You can label it start or you can name it by numbers, which is what I like doing, which, you know, I'm like doing one, two, three. That way I know which one I'm doing and which one I have to later add in if that makes any sort of sense so now the dialogue text is what the npc is going to be saying to you so this is how the npc is either going to greet you or how the conversation is going to start off with your npc you can do it whatever whatever is based off of like what you're saying and then you would go to the dialogue options right here i don't know what i was doing i think i was trying to figure it out um but this is stuff that i don't know how to do um but you go to the dialogue options that's basically what you're going to be saying um that's basically your response back to the npc and you can this is where it gets fancy you can make it different colors and stuff like that how i am doing the highlight is i am doing control a on my keyboard or control fn a i believe if you are on a laptop that is like hp or pc with like windows on it and then you're gonna want to refer it back to another dialogue now what i did here as a mistake is i put in one <laughs> i did not mean to do that um that's basically didn't go to put me into a circle um and basically you go back to dialogues and you press mandy then you go to one and then so on and so forth and that's how you basically you're gonna do it so yeah i'm basically going in a circle with the npc because you keep clicking it and the way to get out of that is to press escape uh, again So basically I am going back here and I'm correcting my issue and then I'm adding in more dialogue options. So basically this is going to be how the, you know, how the NPC talks basically or basically your different options to say to the NPC. You can have different options or anything like that but now i'm going in here and i'm adding in a whole nother thing so this is going to be what the npc is going to be saying in response to what you have just said to them with your like response back to them if that makes any sort of sense you're basically just setting up like a conversation if you can kind of get the hang of this but this is where you're going to want to add in the um the the response like what is this tied to basically and i'm going to show that in a minute and then there's also options to like close it so as soon as you click on something it's just going to like close down the conversation or the dialogue box and you're not going to be able to like you know keep going further with the npc or else you're gonna have to start all over again so yeah that's basically what you're saying back to the npc um depending on what you are like you know saying or depending on what your script says and yeah so like you can select dialogue to say what is it referring to you can select close or it could be like a command prop so it could give you something which i think is really cool Oh, I also forgot to uh, tell you how to like put put that color, the exact color back in um, into like an empty thing. You would basically do like control B, control A to copy, control, no, it's control A to highlight. It's control C to copy, control V to paste. So if that's a very handy tool with just anything basically. But now I'm just going to show you how this is going to work. So, you know, you have like the little thing that's going to close and say, thank you for welcoming me. And then you can continue on the conversation and then another closing line, which is like, Hey, thank you for the information. So yeah, that is basically how you do the dialogue boxes, which is really complicated and really annoying to do. 
and I'm gonna show you how to do lines. So basically right off the bat when you set down a NPC into the world, it's going to automatically have a dialogue or a line and you're going to right click it on it and it's gonna say hey at P. So it's just gonna be like a hey player. So, cause you're the player that clicked on it. And then you can go into lines and you can set them up to have a conversation with them if you're going to want to loosely improv with an NPC. Um, so that way you don't have a dialogue box. This is the way that I like doing it because it's simple and it doesn't look terrible and I like it. Um, and make sure that when you're doing the lines that you set random lines to know before you exit out of what you're doing. So make sure that you have written up all your lines and stuff, all the interaction lines, and make sure that before you exit out of it, that you click no random lines. Um, because if you do it before and then you go in to edit the lines, it's gonna reset it. So make sure to click no and then the little X in the corner just to make sure that the lines aren't random so they're all in order. So that way the conversation makes sense basically so yeah but the issue with this is is you're gonna have to scroll through again um if you mess up which i've done a couple times but yeah that's basically that background npcs are exactly as they sound they sit in the background and they fill up space and they make the set look a lot more believable and a lot more full and a lot more lively quickly i'm just going to show you how i set up background npcs Alrighty, so what I'm doing right now is I am going to show you guys how to set up custom background NPCs, which is kind of super easy within my opinion. But yeah, basically what I'm not doing right now is I'm showing you all the different options that you can have with your NPC. Personally, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to hide the NPC's name so you don't see it. And right now what I'm doing is I'm setting the NPC to sit, which you go to AI and then movement, and then you set them to sitting and then um, a manual position, which you're going to have to judge. It kind of includes doing math, but I just kind of do random numbers and then I adjust like what it needs to be either going forwards or backwards within the numbers um just to set it up correctly so yeah i don't really do anything like super fancy for that um so yeah oh and also if you do another one you can set it to puppet and then you can adjust that accordingly and make sure that it's like set up correctly and that's how i make certain npcs look like they're holding like phones or they're holding clipboards or if they're just gonna be if you just want an npc to hold something and look like it's looking at something um that's basically how i would do that so yeah it's super simple except you would have to like set up the legs and stuff again because the puppet makes this npc do this really weird thing where they go through the floor so yeah that's super weird, but um, this is good. Also, make sure to not move the body. Um, I've accidentally done that a couple of times and it's looked a bit weird. If you don't need to move the body, like if you're, they're not like, if it doesn't look like they're sitting back, if you want them in an upright position, just don't move the body at all. Don't touch it because I've made that mistake so much, so many times. But yeah, and now I'm going to be going and showing you where you can find the infamous phone that everybody keeps asking me where it is. Um, that's where it is. It comes with the variable commodities mod. So yeah, that's where the phone comes from, guys. Just letting y'all know that right now. So yeah, but that's basically how you set up an NPC. That is basically it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope it was informational and I hope I explained everything properly for you guys and I hope it was easy to understand. So yeah, if you have any questions, please comment them down below and I will try to answer you to the best of my ability. And yeah, I hope you have a good rest of your day slash night slash whatever time it is for you and I will see you in my next video. Bye-bye.